Hello guys, back at the frames again. Thursday was a bit of an eventful day for me, as well as being unable then to solve what was wrong. We had a vertical descent test with this little bit of a spritter, right onto my foot with the sharp corner. Got a nice bruise there, a lot of uh, selected language, but now we're back onto the job. I think I've found what the error is, and it's not at all what I expected. I've had the spreader in and out three or four times, uh, trying to see why it pulls the frames over. It is so close and it just doesn't get there. Finally, I found out the hole positions on the inside bracket are incorrect by about a quarter of a hole. If I take all of the bolts out of the pins, I can clamp up over the outside and then the amount out of square is less than a millimetre at the, what would be the top of the frames. I'm satisfied that that would be quite okay. So I'll move the camera around, you can have a look down inside. I've decided to make a new bracket for the side of it, it's a couple of hours work. But at least then I can put the holes in the right place. I don't know how um, the work was inaccurate because I spotted through with a transfer punch. It did all as far as I can see the right way, but it's not too good. Okay, bring it around for close on. There we are, that's a close up of it in situ. Now what I have been doing is putting the drill through there and clearing those holes out and I got it a little bit better. Now I've got to bolt it up on this side, the near side to us. This part of the frame can pull across quite easily where it's vertical. But these holes here are mismatched substantially. I'm not just going to drill it through bigger and bigger. That makes the frames a little bit weaker there. And I think there might be a slight tilt in that face of the bracket there. So off with the river tails, make up a new angle plate, um, correct these holes, I'll clamp it all up with a big clamp over the outside and then I'll go through and mark the holes with a bit more accuracy. Disappointing for it to come out like this. I didn't expect it but I have a suspicion that the piece of steel plate that I used on the build table was not dead flat that might have kicked the frames up. My fault. Can't find any other excuses. I just didn't check that it was square enough. Greenhorn at it, I suppose. We'll come back tomorrow and see a bit more work. Just a quick look at it up on the surface plate. Uh, this is where I was caught out. Um, as far as I can tell, it's within one and a half thou that way. Four thou that way. Roll it over. This has got a bow in it, but reasonably straight. Put your square up over the edge. Everything checked out. Really, really good. Within a couple of thou, which is what you expect on this kind of metalwork. But I never thought about the whole panel being transitioned down in one direction. That took several hours of looking and swearing and trying to find out. So it's a trap for your body. You can have the whole space perfectly. But if they're all moved down by a couple of millimetres, it pulls your frame sideways badly. At least now, I know what to look for. Now I'll just use a hammer and tartar punch to knock these rivets out of the plate but realistically I won't use it on the surface plate I'll get another piece of steel now that wasn't a bad job I had them banged out in just a couple of minutes they had a reasonable grip in the plate which I was happy with but things happen you have to move on here we have a raw piece of angle I'll square that up in a shaper after I file the end square and I try and get rid of the wiggly wobblies usually with these you have uh, one reasonably flat side and one side completely UTS but I'll put the square on and find out if I have to take much off to get it to sit flat and square. Once it's suitable for use, we'll put the plate and the, uh, sorry, the spreader and the angle up into the loco and then transfer punch to new sides. Back when we're up to that. And here's another hint for the unwary. Angle iron and steel plate out of the Asian countries comes with an enormous coating of mill scale. It is awful crap and your paint will not stick to it and it will not give you a very very good finish so get it all off I used a bit of emery tape on a file for the small bit but with the bigger frames I'll give you a good laugh I made a trough out of industrial stress wrap and a few pieces of timber put the frames in to soak with citric acid and I put a bit of hand towel around so that it'll stay on the job and after about four hours it just wasn't good enough so I thought I'll leave it till bloody Monday and by the time I come back on Monday, I had this greeny-brown, 
greasy sludge on the outside of the frames that was almost impossible to get off. So keep it wet, don't let the bloody stuff dry out. But that's the minimum you should get the steel up to before you assemble it so that the paint will stick later on. And that's another reason why I've got to pull some of the parts apart off the loco before I paint it up to get the rest of the cleaning up done. Bye for now. Well here we are back again. This time's at the little Baby Kearns HBM. Uh, it's still on the loco frames. I'm trying to narrow down all the defects. I've taken one of the brackets off the mid frame spacer or the motion gear spacer and I found that there's about 0.4 to 0.5 millimetre too wide here so it's actually spreading the frames a little bit as it goes in and although that's not a big error these brackets are just a, a bit off funny dead on the middle of the plate is dipped by about half a millimetre and it's all bloody additive so I'm trying to get rid of each little defect as I can now I've got the frame set up on the milling machine table so I don't want to break that down and the shape of ice is pointing in the wrong direction and I turn that around I've got to take the shit box off and move all the stuff at the front so I'll set it up here it's a slow old girl only does about 500 rpm flat out and I'll be running it around 250 but I'm not a monkey in a hurry so I'll take you around the other side uh, we can get in better here to give you an idea of the setup but the other side I'll show you what I've done with the dial gauge and throw the uh, cutter in the collar chuck and then we'll do the cutting next weekend. Okay, move you over the other side. Here we are at the workpiece again. I'll just run the table across. And over 145 to 150 millimetres of table movement, it doesn't have an error of a hundredth of a millimetre, and that's pretty well close enough for me. So now I'll have to try and position the camera for a better shot of all the hand wheels, etc. But that'll have to be next weekend. I'm getting pretty tired. I'll knock off the oil indicator. And just mount the cutter in the chuck. I've stuck to the one style of chuck across all the machines where possible. One size of collet so they're all interchangeable. Same collet goes in the work head for the tool and cutter grinders. It just makes life easy. That's a 20mm PNN cobalt end mill. I think it'll stand up to 240 rpm and I'm only going to be taking about four or five thou cut at a time so I can measure and make sure sure I'm not making more mistakes <laughs> okay I'll draw back a little bit and try and show you some more of the machine for those of you that don't know the little Kearns borer I'll run through some of the controls and then demount the camera to get you up closer this is a fairly old girl 1965 vintage or thereabouts and part of the optometric system doesn't work properly but it still has a few uh, vernier scales on it and it's a wonderful thing to use, provided you don't mind going box slow. Two speed head at the top here, high and low speed, and three speeds on the switches, electric. And you've got a nice chart here that tells you what RPM you get in both ranges. And it's got a separate power feed motor for the table. So you don't get so many inches per turn, you get so many inches per hour, I suppose. But it tells you what RPM you're doing um, with the motor, which gear selector switch you've got or gear selector speed you've got for the power feed and how many thousands of an inch per turn you'll get in feed rate so it goes back to thousands but it's still pretty usable this little lever here is for the longitudinal or transverse table feed uh, of course with longitudinal it takes the whole carriage along and there is a vernier on the bed here for accurate movement you've got an optometric scale here for the height of the head and an optometric scale here for the transverse feed but for what we're doing they're not needed at all this wheel here moves the table manually okay this one here is to lock the saddle in position around the side here we have a little hand feed so you can crank the table in manually and it's marked off you know i think half thou divisions and it it's in really good physical condition that way it runs really well. This is the manual uh, high speed or fast moving table feed. 
so you can bring it up to the work. There are three speeds on the table feed here. You've got 1.7 um, inches per minute. When it goes in, 0.6 inches a minute and one inch per minute up in the high position. This is gearbox neutral at the moment. Now you've got to have the uh, power feed selected on either in forward or reverse before you start the main contactors because it doesn't like starting through the forward and reverse switch. You've got to start it through the main contactors. But once you're up and running, this is your clutch and also your feed rate changer. It all goes in very quickly when it's running. It's just dog clutches, that's all. So I'll take the camera off and bring you around and show you the fine feed wheel, but it's a lovely old thing to work. It really took a long while for me to understand how it works, but what I love is the table. Any little job like this, there's no need for a vice. Just drop it off the table, a couple of tow clamps and away you go. But I can also mount a boiler that's three metres long, but I've got no height restriction. The only restriction is the work envelope, which from memory is a 12 inch, 300 millimetre cube. You can work 18 inches with the table. Uh, these tow clamps here lock the table dead in at 90 degree intervals and the top table rotates and it's also marked off in degrees here. So very, very universal machine. It was meant for tool room work when it was first made. And the power feed drilling capacity is only one inch and they suggest you don't go over that. The main drive gears are fairly robust but the feed gears a little bit pissy, like if you're doing tool room work, you don't need a lot. And in those days, it would probably have been just pushing high speed steel cutters, so not absorbing a whole lot of horsepower. So I'll bring you back when I take the camera off. Well, here we are back at the cockpit of the Kearns. Here's a little fine feed for the table. And if we can focus on it, you can see the increments on the little wheel there. That's part of making this machine really good to use. It also has covers over the sliding ways. There's the vernier scale for linear movement. If you're using the facing head, there's the adjuster wheel at the back and below that the scale for the arm to move in. And there's forward and reverse for the facing head feed. I'll be leaving that out at the moment. There's one of the windows for the optometric system. And if I can, I'll get you in there when the lights are on. That's the feed and speed chart. 45 minimum RPM, 510 maximum. And it goes from 0.12 inches per rev up to 0.6 inches per rev. Boy, no, that doesn't sound right. No, that's the position of the lever. You've got uh, 13 thou inches per rev, 22, 38. That's a fairly high. And then it comes right down to 1.2 thou, which is a very fine feed. You can do a lot of fine work with this. Uh, the vertical head is just clamped with this clamp on a bit of sheet here. That's a little bit on the weak side. I'd rather see um, more physical clamping there. But it is a light machine. You can see by the slides of the head, this machine has not seen a lot of work. It came out of a TAF school. I had to put a new tower shaft worm wheel in there. That was the subject of a previous video I did, and uh, a lot of work. That took several weekends to get it going. So here's the workpiece set up. Next weekend we'll make some noise and just take a little bit off it. Bye for now. Please like and subscribe.